Of all the things that make human beings unique, one that gets overlooked literally is the shoulder and it did no less than alter the course of human evolution. As NPR science correspondent Christopher Joyce reports for our series, The Human Edge, the shoulder gave us survival skills we never could have imagined without it. To understand our shoulder, look at the skeleton, as I did with anthropologist David Green at George Washington University's Medical Center. What you see is an intersection. The head of your arm bone meets your collarbone and part of the shoulder blade. They're held together with tendons and ligaments. The whole joint angles out horizontally from the neck like a coat hanger. Because it's pointing straight out, our arms are allowed to just kind of hang freely, and then you know, we can flex our, our arms at the elbow, and we have our hands right in front, and that's useful for manipulation. Apes, the joint actually points almost towards the ceiling. The ape shoulder is good for hanging from a tree, but when our ancestors started walking on two legs, our shoulder started to change. Early on, the joint descended lower on our chest. For a while, the shoulder blade was more on the side, over the rib cage. Then it moved onto our back. Anatomist Susan Larson of Stony Brook University says even after early humans left the trees altogether a little over two million years ago, the shoulder still wasn't settled. The next stage was something not modern human-like, nor ape-like. It was something entirely different. The range of motion would have been mostly sort of in front of your body, so great for making tools, but not so good for throwing. These were the earliest humans, about two and a half million years ago. It took another two million years or so for the collarbone to lengthen and the joint to lie horizontal as it does now. When it did, though, the shoulder gave us something novel the ability to throw. And throwing changed everything. It turned us into dangerous hunters. This is where all the weapons are kept. John Shea is an archaeologist at Stony Brook. Spears, arrows, darts, that sort of thing. One of my faculty colleagues walked in here and said it looks like the Tower of London, but uh, we call it the swamp. (laughs) Shea studies primitive technology, especially weapons. We're going out to a football field for a demonstration. The weapons are in these. Okay, this is one of the spear, the spear cases. And why don't you guys carry the box? We'll use that as a target. It's less an issue than carrying the deer head across the campus. Shea says the secret of the modern shoulder was its ability to move the arm in almost any direction, even behind the back. That combined with other early human traits to enable us to throw with power and accuracy. We have a, a wrist that can, can move like a whip. You know, we can accelerate through throwing. Even the lower body contributed to a good throw. The gluteus muscles, you know, your rear end, your, your thighs, your calves, these are all things that make for good running, but they also make for good throwing. Shea hands me what might have been the first shoulder-fired human projectile. It's a limestone spheroid. In other words, a rock. This one is about a million and a half years old. I throw it, it goes about 20 yards. I didn't bring, I didn't bring down an antelope. Shea thinks our ancestors threw rocks pretty well. The problem was rocks weren't good weapons, even against slow-moving prey. Best case scenario, you've annoyed it. Worst case scenario, this is one of these animals that deals with annoying primates by trying to stomp them into paste. So humans invented something sharper, wooden spears. The oldest were discovered in Germany, about nine feet long, and date back 400,000 years, probably made by Neanderthals. Shea's made copies for himself. He throws one. He's accurate, but the spear's heavy and travels only about 30 yards. I soon discover that it's harder than it looks. Yeah, just like that. Thumb and forefinger in opposition like that. I broke it. (laughs) Again, right motion, lousy weapon. Humans eventually discovered physics. For example, make a throwing motion with your arm. Okay? You'll see your hand moves a lot farther than your elbow does. It also moves faster. So if you could make your arm longer, your throwing speed would be much faster. It's the same principle as a catapult. And the atl-atl, that's A-T-L-A-T-L, does just that. It's a slender two-foot length of wood. You hold one end in your palm, strapped to your fingers. At the other end, you attach an arrow or dart with a point directed out toward that herd of wildebeest that you've been tracking. And then you throw just by... Stepping forward like that. Wow. If that had hit a person, it would have knocked them right off their feet onto the ground. A little bit closer than that, it would have pinned them to the ground. Really? So th- this, these things are serious weapons. 150 feet is easy. 
one of Shay's students threw a dart the length of a football field. Shea suspects that the hungrier you are, the better you throw. Primitive as these weapons may have been, they gave early humans a huge advantage in hunting for calorie-rich meat and for defending themselves from predators or other humans. With a weapon system like this, body size doesn't matter. It's, it's all in length and speed of rotation. Length of arm and rotation of the shoulder. Yes, it's a quirky joint, that shoulder, complicated and prone to injury, but it helped turn a puny primate into the planet's most efficient predator. Christopher Joyce, NPR News. <laughs>